had come to Gwilon from her mother, and so had her mastery of it, people said. Ah, they said when Gwilon played, you can tell. That is Diera's touch, just as their parents had said when Diera played. Now that is the true Penlin touch. Gwilon's mother had had the harp from Penlin, a musician's dying gift to the worthiest of pupils. From a musician's hands, too, Penlin had received it. Never had it been sold or bartered for, nor any value put upon it that could be said in numbers. A princely and most incredible instrument it was for a poor harper to own. Now the shape of it was perfection. Every part was strong and fine. The wood was hard and smooth as bronze. The fittings of ivory and silver. The grand curves of the frame bore silver mountings, chased with long intertwining lines that became waves, and the waves became leaves. And the eyes of gods and stags looked out from among the leaves that became waves. And the waves became lines again. It was the work of great craftsmen. You could see that at a glance. And the longer you looked, the clearer you saw it. But all this beauty was practical, obedient, and shaped to the service of sound. Now the sound of Golan's harp was water running, and rain and sunlight on the water, waves breaking, and the foam on the brown sand, forests, the leaves and branches of the forest, the shining eyes of gods and stags among the leaves when the wind blows from the valley. It was all that. And it was none of that. When Gwilan played, the harp made music. And what is music but a little wrinkling of the air? 